Hello and good morning. Welcome to today's session titled Postmodern Feminism, Gender and Performativity. In the final segment that we shall be taking a look at this week, we are focusing on how postmodernism and particularly poststructuralism influence various theorizing aspects of feminism and how those things could be located in the particular aspects of gender and the, uh, uh, the theory of performativity uh, propounded by Judith Butler. So this uh, discussion also needs to be situated in continuation with the many post-structuralist theories we had been taking a look at and also we have already highlighted the fact that the post-structuralist theories, they do give a foundational aspect, they do provide a certain uh, foundational frameworks to engage with the idea of the postmodern and to engage with postmodernism in different texts and contexts. So how do we locate postmodernism and the play of postmodernism in the site of gender? And uh, if we examine this historically, it needs to be located as a part of a third wave of feminism. You might also be familiar with the first and second wave of feminism as those uh, aspects are not part of this discussion. We shall not be engaging with those in detail. Uh, contrary to the first and second notions, the third wave feminism, which also uh, challenged many of the concepts introduced in the first and second wave, they uh, deconstructed the role of, uh, deconstructed the notion of uh, uh, gender and also began to see gender as a socially uh, constructed uh, phenomenon. So in that sense, one of the most influential theorists in the third wave feminism who could also be associated with postmodernism is Judith Butler who was also tremendously influenced by deconstructive thought by uh, Derrida, which we have already taken a look at in one of the previous sessions. Uh, Judith Butler particularly focused on the idea of gender and performativity and the objective of this lecture is to highlight how gender and performativity operates in the postmodern scenario and also to uh, showcase the various uh, forms in which it has been theorized and how later we could uh, uh, perhaps apply it as part of literary criticism. And uh, in this text, uh, in this lecture, we shall be focusing on how Butler looks at gender like a text and analyzes it like a performance and also how she talks about the various ways in which gender could be, uh, how, how gender could be identified as different roles being played out and uh, repeated and validated uh, within, a speci uh, within specific social and cultural context just like language and this is something that also, that has also been uh, a departure from the structuralist assuring notions about language. And uh, this uh, performance is also open uh, to uh, contest and negotiations because the meaning can never be fixed. And the unfinalizability of meaning, the rejection of any kind of fixed uh, meaning, any idea of fixity is also quite uh, characteristic of the postmodern ideas. It's also important to take a quick look at the, uh, the contributions of Judith Butler. She was born in 1956. Butler is an American uh, philosopher and a gender theorist and her contributions could be seen as a very seminal and even foundationalist to the uh, idea of third wave of feminism. So uh, the idea of performativity which we shall be focusing in today's lecture is drawn from two of her seminal works. The first one titled Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity which was published in 1990 and uh, secondly Bodies That Matter on the Discursive Limits of Sex published in 1993. Gender Trouble uh, could be considered as a hugely popular text by uh, Judith Butler. It was also one of the most influential books produced in the 20th century. And uh, what makes this work significant uh, was the commercial success that it enjoyed along with the theoretical foundations that it laid. It said to have sold over 100,000 copies. In this work notably, she uh, critically discusses the works of uh, uh, Freud, Simone de Boer, uh, Lacan, uh, Lucy Irigere, Derrida and even Foucault. And we can also see that her idea of performativity, her critique of gender, her critique of gender as a social construct is also a derivation of all of these theorists, all of the post-structuralist ideas put forward by these many theorists that she talks about. And uh, she coined the term gender performance or gender performativity. And since the uh, 1990s, this is an important term to talk about gender, particularly in the post-colonial and the post-modern uh, phases. And this idea is based on the notion of destabilizing gender identities and categories. And uh, this is also in a typical way a move away from the structuralist notions where there are fixed meanings for the uh, signs and the signifiers. And here Butler uh, highlights the need to uh, destabilize the gender categories and the uh, fix, fixed ideas associated with gender.
in order to understand the changing nature of the performances which have been attributed to particular gender roles. She also draws upon Derrida's work and it is in the ways in which she talks about performativity that we find that feminism also ties into Derrida's work on reiteration and repetition which he used extensively in the context of uh, his discussions about uh, uh, deconstruction and also how he also rejected and moved away from the structuralist notions and the structuralist ideas about language and uh, the idea of sign, this uh, signifier and the signified. When we talk about the intellectual tradition that laid a significant background for Butler's work, two names have to be further highlighted, Simone de Beauvoir and Foucault. Needless to say, both these theorists and the uh, contributions and the works that they foregrounded were seminal to understanding of uh, postmodernism, poststructuralism and even the literary and cultural productions of the contemporary. Uh, Simone de Beauvoir uh, no noted in her work that one is not born a woman but rather becomes one. We find Judith Butler playing with this notion and also reinventing the idea of gender, reinventing the various uh, categories which are also implied in the uh, context of gender and she argues that gender identity cannot be biologically located. Here she also foregrounds the difference that she later highlights in most of her works and also becomes rather foundational to the understanding of third wave feminism, the distinction between sex and gender. One could be born a male or a female. But gender identity as a man or a woman is ascribed by many, many constructs of the society. She also uses Foucault's ideas extensively. Foucault particularly in his work Discipline and Punish, he wrote the body was in the grip of a very strict powers which imposed on it constraints, prohibitions or obligations. And in Discipline and Punish, uh, Foucault also discusses extensively on the ways in which body has been um, used to, per to perform particular roles by the society or the norms which are dictated by the, uh, the external, the, the outside factors. So, um, Butler draws upon these ideas and she argues that the society inscribes on our external bodies our internal, gen internal gender and sexuality. So, here Butler also differentiates between what is apparent outside and also what constitutes the inside. She also breaks away from the conventions of the society ascribing certain internal values such as uh, gender or sexuality as a uh, reinforcement, as a uh, stereotypical uh, uh, reiteration or even any kind of a cultural construct. And uh, these two aspects also form the basis of uh, Butler's work and also our understanding of performativity and gender in the context of postmodernism. So, at this point, it is also important to ask how this becomes importance for us. Why do we need to discuss this in order to engage with postmodernism? Because this course is primarily about postmodernism in literature, and it is very imperative for us to understand how these varied discussions in the context of poststructuralism, in the context of feminism, and about gender and performativity will contribute to our understanding of postmodernism. In uh, Butler's use of uh, performativity, we find that she is using the poststructuralist theories and applying a feminist perspective to explore and theorize male and female gender roles. And uh, here, this is a very typically postmodern perspective because the, the biological distinction is between male and female roles. But by ascribing gender roles such as man and woman, there is also a kind of a delimiting experience which is being forced upon these particular biological entities. Butler in a very postmodern way is rejecting these notions and moving away from these categories to encourage us to think in uh, many different ways. In that context subsequently she is also arguing that there is no true gender. The definitions and qualities which are being now made available as part of definitions of being a woman or being a man are only part of a wider narrative that reinforces stereotypes and expectations. And how is this being done? This is being done through particular kinds of performances. Because those are not always already given identities those uh, distinctions are not always already uh, there as natural, they are being provided by the society, they are being reinforced by through various uh, kinds of cultural institutions and this reinforcement is being done through performances. So, how is this performance uh, constituted? 
Butler and many other proponents of the third wave feminism are challenging the idea and the conventional constitution of men and women and arguing that the, they are only social categories defined in relation to each other. So, how do they become a social categories as we have uh, illustrated the, the, the biological category is that of male and female. So, by situating them in binary opposition to uh, one another, they are being constructed as social categories and their definition is also in relation to each other uh, in binary opposition. One should be either male or female, one should perform either a male gender role or a female gender role and this identity of being male or female is also dependent on the kind of performance and the kind of performativity that is applied to an object that is being uh, applied to a subject. So, this uh, could be this uh, could be constituted in many different ways, uh, it could be about bodies behaving in particular ways. So, here here is also a, a very a significant uh, focus, a very a significant underscoring of the role of the body and the identity is also being reduced to the level of the body and here we uh, notice that uh, clothing, uh, mannerism, speech, language, all of those uh, become determinants in this uh, performance. And uh, it is also about uh, having particular kinds of uh, clothing to ascribe different gender rules, different ki kinds of clothes, different kinds of uh, mannerisms which are being traditionally attributed to either men or women. So, according to these uh, kinds of uh, uh, behavior, according to the particular kinds of uh, uh, behavioral patterns and the uh, performances that they highlight, they are also being characterized, they are also being classified according to the characteristics that they display as men and women. So, there is also this question which gets highlighted, what is meant by the signifier of woman in relation to the post-structuralist position of examining signs and signifiers. Here we find Butler being very post-structuralist and also being tremendously influenced by Derrida and she agrees that she acknowledges that a woman is a signifier. But the contention is about the fixity of meaning which is also being attributed to the signifier woman. And she also here draws upon Derrida to talk about the multiple meanings which are available to the signifier and that there is no final meaning which could be attached to the signifier of woman and there is no way in which one could say that this is the only meaning, this is the essential meaning which the term woman bears. And there is also a social uh, function that all of these uh, things perform because uh, if you talk about language and uh, clothing which are also signs of being men and women and these different kinds of uh, the different kinds of languages and clothing are, are being used to declare one's gender as a, a man or a woman. And uh, for example, uh, if you talk about cross dressing, we also realize that it causes a lot of confusion as well as moral outrage because this kind this performance according to the gender rules, it also has a larger role to play. It maintains and legitimizes a seemingly natural gender binary, a seemingly natural gender binary. And this term seemingly natural is uh, very important because gender binaries otherwise has been constructed as a very natural phenomenon such as a male and a female. But on the other hand, I reiterate, Butler highlights the notion that unlike the biological binary of male female which is natural, the gender binary, the difference between man and woman is a socially constructed notion and it is also the uh, need of the society to maintain and legitimize such kinds of binaries. What does Butler mean when she identifies gender like a text? There are four points which could be highlighted in this context. This also needs to be read in connection with the many discussions that we have been having in the context of postmodernism by uh, problematizing the idea of text and how the text has been seen in the in a deconstructive uh, fashion. This also, so in a sense, uh, this discussion also uh, demands a recall of the previous uh, lectures where uh, we had been talking ex extensively about the idea of the text and how a text could be deconstructed in the postmodern scenario. So, when we talk about gender like a text, first of all, it has to be performed. Secondly, the performance is a context specific. Thirdly, it has to be repeated in order to be recognized. Here we can also find a lot of similarities with that of language. Fourthly, it has no stable meaning because it is performed endlessly. So, what do we mean when we say that gender is a, like a text and it has to be performed? 
and this uh, uh, this implies that there is no identity behind the acts that are supposedly expressing gender this is only an illusion of a gender identity because it's a social construct it's not a reality but it is a social construct which is being made to pass off like a uh, seemingly natural entity a seemingly natural uh, a binary or like a very natural identity and uh, it is also context specific because it is uh, the 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 gender role performed in different places would also be very different in uh, uh, many theorists give this example of a tribal woman versus a, uh, a woman who is working in the corporate uh, field uh, in order to show that these different contexts demand different kinds of gender performances or performativity and one is certainly very different from the other so just like a uh, language just like a text the meaning which is being derived over here is also very context uh, specific the performance that is demanded of different contexts is also very different so just like language just like the relation between uh, sign signifier and the signified gender is also a performance which has to be repeated in order to be recognized and uh, it's uh, this repetition and this legitimization and this uh, reinforcement of uh, uh, a seemingly natural coherence is very important in order to complement the meaning making process and gender begins to make sense the natural coherence the seemingly natural coherence makes sense only through this repeated repetitions and this uh, recognition and acknowledgement which is being given to it by any kind of external force such as the society or any kind of cultural institution and like a text it has no stable meaning because it is performed endlessly as uh, butler would uh, uh, put it the term woman may be a signifier but what it signifies is never defined and in these uh, four elements by in in which we also equate gender with a text with aspects of language we also find that it is very very postmodern in the engagement with particular kinds of identities and particularly and particular kinds of socially constructed notions and this view of looking at gender as a performance by linking gender and performativity and identifying gender like a text is a very postmodern and post structuralist view and the, this is uh, for obvious reasons firstly because it refuses a fixity of categories gender is seen as a provisional shifting uh, uh, contingent and a performed category there's no fixed meaning or a fixed category which could be attributed to it and it also secondly rejects essentialisms and stable identities or meanings and gender is seen as an unstable category that has to be uh, repeatedly reinvented this is also quite similar to many other positions from the point of view of postmodernism and post structuralism it's also anti essentialist and when i uh, say anti essentialist uh, i mean that there is no idea of a essential man or an essential woman there are only meanings that emerge in performances relative to each other as butler would put it and the performance which is identified with this meaning is also quite different in different contexts as we have noted the performance in tribal india is certainly different from a shopping mall so the meaning differs according to the context and in that sense there is no idea of an essential woman therefore this approach could also be seen as very anti essentialist and it also rejects the notions of authenticity authority universality and objectivity which is also a postmodern uh, phenomenon of looking at many things in the contemporary so when we talk about the changing uh, notions of uh, feminism the changing notions of the idea of gender in the postmodern world it's important to note that the third wave feminists also began to define feminine beauty for themselves as subjects we also spoke briefly about how the uh, subject position has been changing in the postmodern world how a certain uh, shifting in the idea of the subject as uh, being a uh, coherent unified uh, subject has moved away has been challenged and it has moved away from the structuralist uh, liberal humanist point of view so uh, in the definition of, the, of feminine uh, beauty in the third wave of feminism in the postmodern world the beauty is not seen as an object of sexist uh, patriarchy and on the contrary a kind of an articulation of particular kinds of uh, feminist subject positions and also another example would be a development of a, a rhetoric of mimicry 
and this is done through particular strategies of uh, through appropriating derogatory terms such as a slut or a bitch in order to subvert sexist culture and to deprive it of verbal weapons. There is also a rejection of uh, the uh, binary ambiguities and refusal to think in terms of us and them. There are even uh, certain thinkers and certain uh, writers who would reject the use of feminist as being limiting and exclusionary because they also want to break a boundary such as the supposed links between uh, sex and gender. One is a biological category, a biological identity and the other one is a social construct. Here we also find that the script of gender performance in the postmodern world is also a rejection of all kinds of uh, uh, totalizing explanations which also makes it uh, very post-structuralist and postmodern. And to sum up it is also important to highlight the gender and its meaning it depend on locations and context and it cannot be universal because meanings are made at the at a local level. There are no universal meanings, there are no totalizing uh, fixed uh, stable meanings, it is all local and it is continuously in a, in a state of flux. And this meaning, this uh, the explanations or the um, uh, meanings cannot be fixed and it demands and depends on repeated performances in relation to other performances like gender, uh, text or even language. And also one interesting thing is that one cannot step outside the performance to be objective. In order to develop an objective uh, point of view for example, one cannot step outside one particular gender performance that is in order to uh, develop an objective idea of what it means to be a male or a female one does not have the choice to move out of one performance and adopt another one. And these multiple challenges which are being given on the totalizing explanations make gender performativity, the discussions on gender perf performativity a central aspect uh, to discuss a feminism in the postmodern scenario. And how do we make use of these uh, ideas, how do we make use of uh, these uh, theories in the field of literary criticism? We can use the idea of gender performativity to comment on and to examine literary representations on uh, of gender rules and here we particularly talk about one text which we shall be looking at in detail at a later stage, uh, Jeanette Winters and written on the body. And in this particular work the gender of the narrator is obtuse and undisclosed throughout the novel and uh, the gender of the narrator or the character is also in a fluid uh, state contrary to the popular uh, structuralist assumptions and it is also dependent on the narrator's gender is also uh, very interestingly dependent on the mood of the narrator or the character or how they are feeling, how uh, he or she is uh, feeling at uh, one particular point of time. And uh, in this uh, novel as the plot develops we also see that um, cancer, the disease cancer is also a central character. This engagement with cancer is also uh, very significant in this uh, discussion where the uh, gender of the narrator is undisclosed because cancer is seen as a disease which turns the body against itself. And uh, connecting this with the idea of uh, performativity, the absence of gender is also a turning against the natural order of binary male female gender roles in society. So these are the multiple ways in which we can make use of the idea of performativity, the theory of performativity to understand particular kinds of gender roles being portrayed in uh, literature and also in other cultural uh, sites. There have also been a number of criticisms against uh, uh, postmodern feminisms including the, uh, uh, the, the role of performativity in ascribing gender roles. And this uh, uh, is also because the postmodern uh, feminism, the post-structuralist idea of feminism and the theory of uh, performativity, they emphasize discourse rather than material conditions. So um, we briefly talk about the materialist views which could be seen as a critique of postmodern feminism where they began to argue that the postmodern feminists were guilty of privileging the representational over the lived. So uh, they also uh, uh, the material feminist, the materialist view also called for an inclusion of the material conditions in order to understand the category of gender and it also st turned away from the postmodern flexible shifting discursive view of gender and also encouraged the critics to focus on the social conditions, the economy and the politics to understand gender as a category in the contemporary. So what makes a materialist view different from that of the uh, postmodern uh, views on feminism is that they also include class as a analytical category and this is particularly important because the materialist uh, feminist, the materialist view on feminism also believe that women's oppression stems also from a combination of patriarchy because it is based on unequal gender relations and also on capitalism which is based on unequal class and economic power. So uh, unless you approach the idea of women's oppression or the limiting categories of gender 
from both these aspects are put together, it is impossible to arrive at a liberated unbiased critique. And also uh, coming back to this question about whether uh, whether all women are performing the same kind of rules, it is important to highlight the example that Pramod Naya uses in his commentary. The woman professor of English with a five digit salary and enormous social prestige has managed to overcome at least some of the disadvantages of her gender, whereas the tribal woman is triply disadvantaged by virtue of being poor, tribal and a woman. So, uh, such kinds of many critiques are available against the idea of uh, against the theory of performativity of gender, which is also part of third wave feminism, which also makes use of the post structuralist uh, theoretical positions. Nevertheless, performativity remains a key link in the theoretical feminist frameworks within the discourse of feminism, uh, postmodernism, and queer theory. It is also uh, one of the most used uh, theoretical frameworks to engage with gender within the discourses of literature and also other artifacts of culture. And uh, as we begin to uh, wind up this lecture, it is important to highlight that the uh, idea of performativity, the theory of performativity also gives us certain frameworks to talk about the destabilization of the categories of sex and gender and how they are anti-essentialist in nature. It also gives us uh, a particular ways to deconstruct the binary oppositions. Here we can also uh, link the theory of performativity with the idea of deconstruction. And it also makes available to us a critique of regulatory regimes and normalizing discourse in society, which also attempts to fix gender and sexuality. And it, it's, there are also these uh, many different uh, multiple uh, uh, points of view being made available through a critique of the performances which are being done in order to ascribe particular gender rules or to declare one's gender in, one's, uh, in, in one form or the other. And uh, finally, this encourages a discussion on the re deregulation and multiplication of sexuality. So, the idea is not to privilege one position over the other. The idea is not to uh, celebrate a queer form of sexuality in opposition to the uh, heterosexual identities, but the idea of performativity in that sense is to encourage a discussion on the deregulation and multiplication of sexualities. And it is at this level that the theory of performativity also becomes a very uh, uh, useful postmodern framework to talk about gender, to talk about sexuality and to talk about the various uh, manifestations of gender relations within particular kinds of uh, literature, particular uh, cultural settings and also in the other larger disciplinary framework. So, with this we also begin to wind up today's lecture. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the next session.